muscle cars. They were the core of the American vehicles back in the 1970s. Today, you'll really only find just three on the market. What you're looking at is a 2013 Dodge Challenger. Now, this one gets the award for looking the most retro, I guess per se retro modern. Now, Chrysler actually introduced his vehicle back in 2008, and um, they've made some steady updates to the car. Um, for 2014, you can basically still buy it just like this. It'll look like this. They haven't really changed the car much, but it has gotten steady improvements. In 2011, uh, Chrysler made the most changes, and that's when they replaced the V6 engine with their 3.6-liter Pentastar. The uh, SRT8 got a new V8 option as well. Now, when this vehicle first came out in 2008, it actually only came in the SRT8 form. It had a 6.1-liter, 425-horsepower V8 with a 5-speed auto. Today, you can get the car in three flavors. There's the SXT, which is the V6 model. That's my tester right here. Um, if you guys go for the RT, it'll have the 5.7 Hemi, while the SRT8 is still available, and you can get that with a 6.4 liter Hemi. Now, there are different subcategories of the SXT. Uh, my particular one that I have here that I'm showing you has the Super Sport package. You'll distinguish that uh, from the 20-inch chrome polished wheels. Um, on the interior, you'll get the paddle shifters for the five-speed automatic transmission, as well as a sport tuned steering and suspension system. Now, surprisingly, even though this car is getting pretty old, it still gets a lot of stares. I mean, look at the damn thing. It's huge, it's boaty. It basically has that classic muscle car proportions. And its main competitors, the Ford Mustang, the Chevrolet Camaro, they're just much smaller and they're more performance focused. While this literally is straight line speed focused, it's not the best car on the curves. Now, when you check out the interior of the Challenger, it is the most spacious cabin in the class. And that's kind of expected. This thing is massive, but you can see stepping in the vehicle, you do have to slightly duck your head because this is a relatively low roof. You can see the interior of this vehicle is older Chrysler in terms of design. The materials are pretty solid, but um, at least this SXT model that I'm driving does have push button start, so basically put your foot on the brake. A five-speed automatic is the only transmission on the V6. You can't get it with a manual. Push the button to start the engine. And of course, what you're hearing is the corporate 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. Uh, Chrysler put this engine in the vehicle in 2011, and it's a pretty nice motor. Surprisingly, it makes a really nice sound. The exhaust sounds fantastic for me. Now, shutting the door, the window is automatic down for both sides, but uh, not, automatic, not automatic up. And I'm not really a fan of the window switches. They are the older design. They feel a little bit cheap, a little bit flimsy. Now, the rest of this interior, um, surprisingly, is soft touch materials on the dashboard, the entire dashboard, actually. The door panels as well, they are soft touch with a leather stitch portion right here where your elbows are gonna rest. Um, in terms of the design, I mean, that. That audio display right there, that head unit is just incredibly old. I mean, Chrysler's been using that for the last 10 years. Um, this does not have the 8.4 inch Uconnect touchscreen that you can get on the Charger. So Chrysler, look for this vehicle to be updated slightly, um, or at least within the next couple of years, it'll be redesigned. Now, here's the five-speed automatic transmission. The Charger, for example, this car's platform mate uses the eight-speed automatic. So this one still uses the old transmission. You'll have a single zone automatic climate control. There's obviously no backup camera when you put this in reverse. The steering wheel, Thankfully, is much nicer. They replaced it with this steering wheel in 2011. It feels really good in your hands. It's nicely leather stitched, no bolstering extension, but you can see the Super Sport package gives you the paddle shifters, and they are actually aluminum, so that's a nice little touch. Um, you can see here there's actually a little sport button here that'll put the vehicle in sport mode. I'll get into that in the test drive and see if it actually makes a difference. Overall, this interior, the design's a little bit bland. It doesn't actually match the menacing looks of the exterior. And this is where you're really gonna be spending most of your time. Now looking at the back seat of the Challenger, it is on the bigger side. The Mustang is definitely the smallest. The Camaro will give you the least amount of legroom. But if you actually need to put people back here, the Challenger is definitely the one that you need to go for. Now being this vehicle is incredibly large, it does have a relatively large trunk as well. Actually in terms of the class, this is the biggest trunk you'll find. It measures 17 cubic feet of space. You can actually fold the seats down, give yourself a little bit more. Now the opening does look small, but if you look at the opening of the Camaro or the Mustang, this thing actually looks pretty big. So it's a relatively practical muscle car. Now, 
we're taking a peek under the extremely long hood of the Challenger, you'll actually find a relatively small but modern V6, I guess small for a muscle car. This is the 3.6 liter Pentastar unit that Chrysler is pretty much known for now. The numbers are actually pretty impressive, 305 horsepower and 268 pound-feet of torque. It goes through a five-speed automatic transmission, it runs on regular gas. Now, if you guys had a Challenger before 2011, you were actually stuck with the old 3.5 liter V6 that made only 250 horsepower. So as you can see, the V6 is no longer a penalty box. Fuel economy is 18 in the city and 27 on the highway with power going to the rear wheels. Let's take a look at how it all works. So the last V6 Challenger I drove had the 3.5 liter V6 with a four-speed automatic. And I gotta say, it was pretty awful. Um, it basically made you think, why didn't you spend the money to get the V8? Now, when Chrysler put the Pentastar unit in this, a lot of people said that you don't necessarily have to get the V8. So let's see if that's the case. Now, my initial impressions are quite positive. Uh, the 305 horsepower that this V6 puts out, it moves the Challenger out quite well. Now, this is still a pretty heavy vehicle. Curb weight's about 3,800 pounds. It's about 400 pounds more heavy than a Mustang. So you do feel it, but nevertheless, the uh, V6, it's pretty responsive. It's relatively revvy. It makes a decent noise from the exhaust. My only real gripe is the five-speed automatic. It is definitely archaic in comparison, which is weird to me because Dodge has an eight-speed automatic in the Charger. They really need to put it in this vehicle. The 2014 Challenger still has the five-speed automatic, and you cannot get a manual with this vehicle. Now, other than acceleration, um, the handling of this vehicle is not what you'd call sporty. Um, it's the biggest in the class, and it certainly feels that way. This one is more for the highway in terms of cruising rather than corner carving like its competitors. Now, with the five-speed auto, the V6 actually pushes this car to 60, and I want to say maybe like 7.2 seconds, just a tick over seven seconds, which is much better than the old model, which I want to say took at least eight and a half seconds. I mean, most for most buyers, the V6 will feel quick enough. Those of you who want a real manual or who want a true muscle car performance, you could still go for the V8. The 376 horsepower and the 5.7 will push this thing to 60 in like five and a half seconds, while the SRT8 with 470 horses will push it to 60 in like 4.5. Now, when you are just driving the vehicle on cruising, this is where the Challenger really shines. Um, it's got a really soft ride. The interior is relatively quiet. The seats aren't the most comfortable thing for me. I kind of, they kind of, the bolstering extensions are all in the wrong spot. I just feel like they're, the seat's making me feel really fatigued and uncomfortable. This new steering wheel is very nice. It feels good in your hands. The paddle shifters, they're, I like that they're actually aluminum and they do respond relatively quickly and they will rev match on your downshifts. The sport mode in this super sport model actually does make a difference. When I have it in sport mode, the transmission shifts much quicker, much sharper uh, versus when you actually have it out. When you have it in just regular mode, it's very eager to seek out the top gears for fuel economy. So even though the Challenger is the oldest muscle car offering on the, on the market right now, surprisingly, it still feels relatively nice. The V6 engine is good, uh, the ride is good, the cabin space is great. I mean, if you guys are in the market for a muscle car, this is the biggest, it offers the softest ride, it offers the most interior and cargo capacity, it's the one that you could possibly take on the highway on long trips and not feel incredibly fatigued uh, like its competitors. So if you guys are in the market for a muscle car that feels I guess is the biggest that actually feels the oldest. This one actually could represent a good choice for you. Hope you guys have enjoyed my overview of this 2013 Dodge Challenger. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you all later.